Hi everyone, it's me. So this week I wanted to do another video about different words between Canada and England. Now I've done a couple of these before with um, like office words that are different and daily words and these are sort of ones that come up again in sort of just daily life basically. Now these specific words are ones that I have noticed as a Canadian living in Kent. So when I say England and Canada, I really mean Kent and Ontario, where I'm from. Obviously both countries, words can differ between, you know, where you are. But overall, this is the kind of stuff that I hear. What I always find really interesting about these types of videos is the fact that both of our countries speak English and Canada has a huge British influence. I know my family came from the UK, you know, a couple generations back, and yet our language has branched off into just like a slightly different territory. So without further ado, let's go. All right, I wrote these down so I couldn't, I, I wouldn't forget them. That's called planning. Okay, so let's, let's, we'll start with the English ones first and then we'll do the Canadian version. So you are going to the hairdresser and you want to get hair cut right here. All right, that's, that's fringe here in England. Cool word, I don't know where that came from. I'm sure it has, has a history. In Canada, you would say bangs, which sounds kind of funny when you think about it. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, you go to um, a hairdresser. Me, as a, as a Canadian, um, being from Ontario, I had, I had bangs. Um, all the time. <laughs> I only recently, like in recent years, grew them out because I just couldn't deal with them. But in England, you would say fringe. In Canada, you would say bangs. Another word difference that I hear, here in England, um, in the summertime, you might see people wearing um, a vest, which to me, as a Canadian, I would say tank top. So this one's kind of confusing because a vest to a Canadian is something else. It's not just like a different word that we've never heard. A vest to a Canadian is like those, you know, like you're putting on a tuxedo. I guess that's kind of how I imagine. And it has like the, you've got like a vest shape thing. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll find a Google, Google image. How about that? We'll do this by Google images. So in England, you say vest. In Canada, we say tank top. And in Canada, vest is a different thing altogether. Because why not? Another really common one um, that you will hear all the time if you are moving between the two countries is trousers here in England. Um, I just bought these new trousers um, that I am now wearing to work. Whereas in Canada, you would say pants. I just bought new pants to wear to work. This one, just like the last one, is a bit confusing because pants in Canada mean something different here in England, which makes things confusing. So, we got trousers in England. In Canada, those are pants. But pants in England is underwear in Canada. <laughs> Does that make sense? So this one's kind of awkward and it can lead to awkward exchanges in England, I've had times where um, I've been talking to somebody and I say, you know, I love your pants. Because to me, I'm looking at their trousers and I say, oh, you know, I really love your pants. Where did they get, where, where'd you get them? But in their mind, pants means like underwear. So that's like a really weird statement to say to somebody. <laughs> Not so much in Canada because if you, if you said trousers, we know what that means and we obviously know what pants mean and, and that kind of stuff, but it is, it can be awkward coming the other way, coming to England. So just be aware that if you are coming to England, um, trousers, not pants. Good job. Now, there's some other ones that are pretty common that you might recognize. In England, you might live in a flat, but in Canada, you would live in an apartment. Same thing, really. With vehicles and cars, the front of the car is called the bonnet, right? The bonnet. Um, in Canada, we would say the hood, the hood of the car. Bonnet, hood. 
they're completely different words, but we're all talking about the same thing. Another one I come across quite a bit is in England, people tend to say autumn. So autumn as in the season. In Canada, people tend to say fall. Um, but that's not necessarily like for everybody. It really, I think, depends um, what part of the country you live in and maybe your own upbringing. What did your parents say? That kind of stuff. But I do notice people in England, at least the people I talk to in Kent, tend to say autumn, whereas Canadians tend to say fall. But this one could go either way. Now, one of the very important, important words here in England is a cue. There's something very important about English culture and standing in a queue. So you're in a queue for the bank, for the post office, for the bus, just queues everywhere and they are very, very important. If you cut a queue, you will be tutted at like you have no idea. Now in Canada, we don't really call them queues per se, it's usually a line. So you line up for the post office, you join the line for the bank, that kind of stuff. But queue and line, just like um, English people, Canadians really um, enjoy a proper lineup and you don't want to cut in front of anybody. Um, that's pretty rude, but if there is something about English culture that cutting into a queue is, you, you can't, you can't do it. This one I've noticed in terms of like uh, fast food restaurants, if you can call them restaurants. So you're ordering food and the person might say, is this for here or takeaway? And you say, oh, this is takeaway. So when you're, when you're taking food to, away from a fast food place, it's takeaway here in England. Is it, is it for here or takeaway? It's takeaway. Do you want to get takeaway tonight? Yeah, let's get an Indian. No, nah, let's get some pizza. So it's takeaway in England. Whereas in Canada, if you were at a fast food place, they would usually say, is that for here or to go? And you say, oh, it's to go. So um, instead of takeaway, Canadians tend to say takeout. So um, do you want to get takeout tonight? Yeah, I'm thinking Chinese. Oh no, what about pizza? So takeaway in England, takeout in Canada. I mean, they both, you know what they mean. So if you move, I mean, people will know what takeout means here in England and takeaway obviously is very clear what that means if you used it in Canada, but just know that we use a different phrase, takeaway in England and takeout in Canada. A really obvious one that people always mention in my videos are crisps that you eat, potato crisps, and chips in Canada, potato chips. This can be kind of confusing because chips in England mean french fries in Canada. So crisps in England, chips in Canada, chips in England mean french fries. It can sometimes be confusing when you're trying to like order at a, at a restaurant. I mean, you're not gonna be ordering crisps at a restaurant, that's weird, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. This one for me personally, I don't think I say crisps ever. It's just one of those words that does not feel natural to me at all. So I still say chips. And then when I'm talking about the English chips, I tend to say fries. Just because those words don't come naturally to me yet and I don't wanna like force it and look weird because it, it, just, it doesn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? Another one, uh, sort of daily words that you might hear that are different. Here in England, you push a baby in a pram. You know, you hold in the little things and you push, push that baby in a pram, where in Canada we would say buggy or stroller. Stroller, I think, sounds more natural to me. But it's the same thing. You put the kid in the thing and then you walk and you push it. It's a pram or a stroller whatever. What's funny is one of my favorite um, British slang, I'm assuming it's British that you all have heard it before, is when somebody says um, they're throwing their toys out of the pram or don't throw your toys out of the pram, which is really silly because it's essentially like the image of some grown person throwing a temper tantrum and throwing their toys out of a stroller. 
Very funny, a wonderful insult, wonderful phrase. 10 out of 10. Now my last one, I have a question for you guys. Most of the people who watch these videos are British, so be interested to know your opinion. One of the words I hear a lot here in England is Moorish. So when you're eating something and you can't stop eating or it's quite rich and you just like want to keep eating it, they're like, oh, you know, the cake is so Moorish. Which is a word I've never heard before used in Canada. Maybe it is used, but in my life, I had never heard it. But I can't really think of what a Canadian version would be of that. I don't really get a lot of Canadians watching these videos. But if anybody has a suggestion on what the alternative to Moorish would be, I'd be very interested because I couldn't think of one. It's just a word that I had not never heard. In Canada, I mean, I don't know. So those are some of the different words used in England versus Canada, and more specifically in Kent versus Ontario. If you guys can think of any more, let me know. I really like doing these videos because I just find it really interesting. Language is cool and it makes us different, okay? As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye!